name is Brett Clow, and I do tech support with Air Motors. The first thing that, that I think everybody can identify with today about filters is uh, micron rating. And what that means is really just how coarse or fine a filter is. Um, Micron numbers are confusing sometimes. A 100 micron filter is coarse. A 10 micron filter, for example, is fine. Um, when we talk about the micron, what we mean is how big is the particle that will pass through. A 100 micron filter is supposed to stop 100 micron particles and larger and let 99 and smaller go through, theoretically. Uh, that makes it coarse relative to a 10 micron filter. Usually the coarse filters are made out of a screen material. The finer filters may be out of a paper or a cellulose material. So it's important when you have a finer filter that it also have pleats in the construction of the element and it have additional surface area to allow it to accumulate some debris but still to flow properly. You buy insurance to protect in the event of a catastrophe. There's no guarantee that you're ever going to need insurance, but surely when something bad happens you want to have it. And that's kind of true of filters. Um, we hope that we don't get anything in our fuel system that a filter would have to actually filter out. And there are some racers who won't run a filter because they've had bad experiences with filters in the past. And the problems that they've had is the filter doesn't flow properly, so therefore it either starves the fuel pump or it starves the engine. Um, talking about the subject of flow rate through a filter brings us to the subject of surface area on the element. And that is to say how much fuel can you get through, whoops, can you get through an element that big versus an element this big, or how much flow restriction does it create? As an example, we have 200 micron filters here. Um, this one, not an aeromotive filter, this one is. Uh, they both are 100 micron. They both go into pretty billet aluminum housings. This filter, when you look at it, it's kind of like a disc inside that, that sleeve. The end screws on, has an O-ring seal. The aeromotive filter snaps on to, maybe, the end cap goes into a pretty billet housing. When you have these two filters side by side in the picture, we can see that there's really quite a difference in the physical size of the filter, which in many cases is a reflection of how big the element is inside and how it may flow. This is the element out of an Aeromotive 12304. This is also 100 micron. And what I've done is just remove the element from the housing and then from the end caps to show you how much surface area we actually put into a filter so that it maintains a certain level of filtration but doesn't flow restrict the, the fuel system. But obviously, comparatively, the surface area is dramatically more, bigger. And that means simply that, number one, it's a lot less of a restriction to the flow from the pump. And if you do get some debris or trash in it, it's not going to clog up what little surface area you have so that you go from kind of flowing okay to not flowing at all. But back to the insurance analogy. You wouldn't probably want to buy an insurance policy that if you owned it and you put it in your house that it would actually start on fire and burn your house down. In other words, you're not going to invest in a filter either that is going to cause more problems than it solves. And so I've told people in the past that if you can't get the right filter, then you're better off with no filter. And that's why we would sec you know, suggest or recommend that you use the aeromotive filters that are recommended for the aeromotive fuel pump that you purchase. Uh, companies often have less expensive alternatives. Um, you do get what you pay for, get an aeromotive filter, it's worth the money.